What's up? Moz here. Today we will tackle the brake system once again on my 2019 30th anniversary MX-5 and today we will be changing out the OEM brake fluid which has been sitting there for a very long time since the car was new and also as you may or may not though I do occasional track sessions and autocross sessions and also I tend to drive the car quite hard on the streets as well hence why I want to change out the brake fluid and we will be changing it out to Motul's RBF600 today then and hopefully everything will run fine because we have potentially a track session on Saturday so this is a Thursday in May so hopefully I won't mess anything up so we can attend that track session but let's see how it goes and also I will show you the process of doing this uh, fluid change and also I will talk a little bit about the different methods you can use either if you're doing it by yourself as me as I like to do it by myself or if you want to do it in more traditional way and get help when you're swapping out the fluid. So that is the intention of today's video. I hope it will be insightful and it will show you how to do it as well and if you have any questions at all just hit me up in the comment sections below and I will answer them as best I can and also do remember to subscribe if you like the content of the channel that will support me a lot give this video a thumbs up if you like it but without any further ado let's get on with the brake fluid change there are multiple ways of bleeding or replacing your brake fluid uh, the old way or how it used to be done in the past was that you had somebody sitting inside the car that would be pumping uh, the brake more or less so pressing the brake pedal and releasing it and you would have then somebody opening and closing the brake nipples which you have on your calipers then and on these brembo brakes i have one inner one and one outer one and I have removed the protection cap that goes on top of this this is just to prevent from road grime etc getting into the nipple so you would then have a canister like this attached to the nipple and that uh, and then at the same time as the person in the car then would uh, press the brake pedal you would then have the brake fluid or air coming out and being captured in the canister Another way of doing this is something called gravity bleeding. It takes a little bit more time, but I would assume that that is maybe the most risk free of doing it. And that is simply you would attach uh, the container and the silicone hose directly to the nipple. You would crack open up the nipple and then you would just let gravity do its thing. But and as you understand that might take some time then if you are then depleting the whole system from the old uh, brake fluid then. What I will be attempting today is to actually pressurize the brake fluid container from above then and then we will attach this canister and the silicone hose to the nipple, we will crack it open and we will hopefully see then that the brake fluid and potential air is being extracted and then we will close the nipple and then potentially pressurize again or fill up with more fluid in the container because we don't want to run dry in the container and that is viable for all of the uh, ways of uh, bleeding your uh, brake and also depleting any oiled, uh, old brake fluid then. Another way of doing it is to actually suck out the old uh, brake fluid or air from the nipple so you can have different type of pumps which creates then a suction or there are pumps which you can attach to your compressor then and by the help of the compressor you will then be sucking out uh, brake fluid and any potential trapped air in your brake system and also again then you would then have to make sure you don't run dry on your canister or container uh, for the brake fluid and another way of doing it is actually using a container like this and filling it up with brake fluid you would submerge the silicone hose down into the fluid it in order not to prevent for air being sucked into the system you would then attach your silicone hose like so crack the bleeder nipple open and then you can go inside the car and you can brake and release the brake by yourself so you wouldn't need a second person but what I will be doing today is then to pressurize the container and then uh, we will trap any exiting uh, brake fluid into this container then and for that I have a Motiv power bleeder then I will show you how that works and also which part number I bought to fit the container cap or the container itself from Motiv then. 
What we will be doing, as I mentioned earlier, is to pressurize the container for the brake fluid. And to my help, I have the Motive Power Bleeder, as you can see. So this is a simple pump with a pressure gauge. And what we do is attach this adapter. And this adapter I got specifically, as I read, it would fit the ND. So it is part number 1118 from Motive. And with this adapter, then we get uh, the adapter itself, which will fit on top of the container. But also we do get two gaskets, one thicker one and and one thinner one. I have tried both and I found that the thicker one gave me a much much better seal on the container and what we will do is then to attach the adapter to the container we will pump up the pressure and the recommended is 15 psi and what is good with the motive is that we will actually fill up with brake fluid in the, the canister for the pump itself and as we are bleeding the brakes the canister will provide brake fluid or fresh brake fluid to the container so we are minimizing the risk of running dry but before we do fill anything up we want to test this and give it a dry run so to speak we attach the adapter to the container and we will pump up to 15 psi and we will see if it keeps 15 psi over a five minute period this in order to make sure that we don't have any leaks on the adapter or any of the connections in the hoses if you have changed your brake lines or whatever you might have done you might have some leakage anywhere and you would see that if the pressure drops i am not sure if it is possible to get a hundred percent ceiling of this maybe we will have some pressure drop but in the test i did i didn't see anything that worried me what is a bit dangerous is if this adapter then for some reason pops off and we have pressurized everything we will have a mess all over the engine bay as the brake fluid then will be squirted out all over the place and that is a very very bad thing because uh, the brake fluid eats paint etc it is not good to have it anywhere uh, uh, apart from in the system or in containers and what is also very crucial is that we don't run dry in the container because then we will be sucking in air in the brake system which will be a catastrophic situation more or less so we make need to make sure that we have fluid in this canister at all times and also that it is providing that fluid to the container what is possible to do i believe is just to pressurize the system start the bleeding process and then check are we running low then we remove the adapter fill this container up directly with brake fluid and then pump up the pressure again and continue that i guess minimizes the risk of potentially squirting any brake fluid anywhere if we have a leakage in the hose or something breaks or what not. What I will be doing is to suck out uh, any excess of the old fluid with a pump like this. You can use a turkey baster etc. So I will suck it out at least until minimum and then fill it up with new fresh brake fluid and that makes uh, the flushing part uh, less tedious because then we don't have to go through that much of the old stuff before we get the new stuff into the system and also my brake fluid i mean i have only driven 6000 kilometers or so with the car it still looks fresh so it's going to be a bit difficult to see if we have any old or new fluid coming out i guess but we will see when we get to that As you saw, I have pressurized the container and we have fluid going into the container. And what I have done now is I have attached the silicone hose to our container, which we have here. And this is positioned higher up than the bleeder nipple so the air can escape upwards. And also then we have a seven millimeter wrench uh, for the nipple itself. And hopefully we don't have any issues. So what I will do is slightly open up the bleeder nipple and we will see fluid coming out and hopefully everything will go okay.
as you can see we have fluid coming out and it looks clear and nice and we have some air bubbles as well we will let this go for a while and then we go and check that the container doesn't run dry because that will cause further issues then and i will repeat this process then uh, closing uh, the bleeder nipple and i will go and see up front if everything is okay and then i will continue and i will do this for a while because as i mentioned the new fluid and the old fluid i can't see any difference more or less so it will be difficult to know if it's only new or old that is coming out so i'll have to do this for a bit and also if this is the longest break line then it will take some time before it is completely flushed out i have now worked my way to the front driver side caliper and we have an inner bleeder nipple and an outer one and we need to do this with both and I have done that on the passenger side already and I thought I'll show you in detail here now on the driver side and uh, what we need to do is then to attach our bottle and silicone hose I'll just put down the bottle there and attach the silicone hose on top of the nipple like so and then on the Brembo on the ND and ND2 it is a 10 millimeter wrench that I will use for to open the bleeder valve then and on the rear it's a 7 millimeter so and I have also pressurized the motive pump I don't know if this comes through sorry like so so we have around 15 psi or one bar of pressure and what we will do now is just to open up the valve like so we turn it quarter of a turn and we should see the fluid coming out as you can see when removing the holes it is important to pinch the hose itself because if I just pull this out we will have fluid all over the place and what you can do is place a piece of paper or a microfiber cloth or similar around the hose like so and maybe it's easier to do it this way around and once you have done that then you can pinch the hose and turn it up upwards so you don't spill anything on your brakes or any of the other components Like that one tip that I got once we are finished is that we have some residue in the actual uh, nipple itself once we have closed it and we can use a toothpick or similar I didn't have anything so I use a allen key and what we can do is hopefully you can see this let me just put some paper around and I can show you what it will be like so hopefully you can see now when I press this down you see there's a bunch of brake fluid that comes out and we can use for dot 4 and dot 3 and dot 5.1 uh, we can use soap and water to clean up any residue from the brake fluid I am now at the last step of the flushing and bleeding of the brakes so all good hopefully everything goes fine once this is done I'll wrap the video up but I think I might go over one more time just to be sure that all air everything is out from the system but this is more or less what you need to do when using the motive power bleeder and uh, your ND then great we can see that the fluid is coming out and I can't see any apparent bubbles either so meaning we don't have that much air to think of and hopefully now uh, the system is totally flushed and we only have the model RBF 600 fluid in the brake system. The car is safely back on the ground and that was all for today's video. I hope it has given some insight of what it is to use the Motive power bleeder together with the ND or the power bleeder in general and uh, tomorrow we have a track day coming so hopefully with the swapped out uh, brake pads uh, which i'll link up above to that video how i did that installation with my carbotex stand and with the new fresh brake fluid that we can push the car a little bit more <laughs> but the track we're attending to tomorrow 
I have never been there, so we will take it a little bit easy because it's a bit cold outside and the Cup 2s don't like cold weather that much. So we'll see how it goes. If you have any questions at all, just hit me up in the comment sections below and I will try to answer them the best I can. Or if you have any comments in general, that would be much appreciated. We are all here to learn from each other. So that is that. And also do remember to subscribe if you like the content of the channel. I have similar type of video as today then. We have car detailing and track days and so on and I will try to film a little bit from the track day tomorrow and make a video of that with the experience of the brake pads and the fluid change. And also, if you thought this video was helpful, give it a big thumbs up and I will be seeing you on the next one.